going to be doing those horrible frozen cold days where you just can't garden. You dream about gardening and you plan gardening, of course. And today's planning and dreaming is tomatoes. We're actually going to talk about something that I think kind of gets forgotten about. It's the first choice you make and it can impact just how amazing those harvests are at the end of the season. And it's how exactly do you choose which tomatoes to grow? So there's a few things that we're going to chat about. There is one that's the kind of like proper grown up serious things to think about. And there's a few more fun things that, you know, I think we all secretly do, but we might not admit to it. So I'll tell you what, let's do the grown up serious bit first, because it's actually quite important. But as usual, I'll try and keep it really, really simple and lighthearted for you guys, so it doesn't feel like you're in school. So the grown up serious bit then, we're going to talk about seasons. In particular, we're going to talk about your grown season for tomatoes and how that relates to the grown season of the actual tomatoes you've chosen. Because, you know, right now it's minus four out here. Everything is all wilty and frosty and icy. So, surely I have to think about that. Oh, now my arms are all wet. I thought it would make a good shot. Oh, I regret that now. Did you know that every type of tomato has its own grown season? So, let's see, a few of the ones I'm growing then. Um, Marmand are big beefsteak tomatoes that we love. They've got about a 65 day season from little plant to mature. Now, Barry's Crazy Cherry, cherry tomato, but it's a really, really high yielding plant, so it needs a lot. That one's more like about the 75 days mark from little plant to maturity. So you can see, you know, you need to know about your tomato plant to know if your garden can give it exactly what it needs. Now you guys know my greenhouse and you know how much I love it. And it's because of this. A greenhouse does something called extending your growing season. Not by heaps. It's not going to mean you can grow tomatoes in the dead of winter in there, unless you've got heat and light and things. But it does let you steal a little bit of time at the beginning of the season and a little bit of time at the end of the season. It's probably only two or three weeks, but that actually can make a massive difference because if my grown season's roughly 85 days in a good year and I've got a tomato, say, like... Teton de Venus, which has a much longer grown season, around the 80 days. If I get a really bad spring, I'm on dodgy ground. So I can use my greenhouse to try and give me a bit of a safety blanket. So that's the grown up first thing then. Have a think about that. What varieties are you thinking of growing? And see if you can find out what their season is. Check your seed packets. If it's not there, have a wee search around the internet. There's loads of info out there. This is my current ploy to see if you guys will give me more likes because you feel sorry for my plant. Doesn't like frost too much. But that's a serious grown up stuff out the way. Now, let's talk about the more fun stuff that we all do. Got to mention it, okay, because it's a big one. So there are three slightly more fun elements to choosing your varieties then. Now the first one I'm going to do is looks because we all do it. Hands up if you spend time on Instagram just looking at all the really pretty tomatoes and that influences what you buy. We all do it. Okay, looks is quite a big one then, because it's fun. Gardening's about having fun. So of course we want to grow those really cool stripy tomatoes, uh, the purple tomatoes, those big oddly shaped ones, all of that kind of stuff. You see it on Instagram, you're scrolling through the feed and it looks awesome. However, have a wee think about that because, and as usual guys, I'm telling you this from my own experience, do you guys remember the video I did where I made passata with indigo rose tomatoes? Those are beautiful tomatoes, like purple with kind of blush into a reddy colour at the top. However, when you kind of put your leftovers in a sauce or a passata, it comes out brown. 
Yeah. Tasted amazing. Not the most appetising to look at. Or even last night's dinner. Um, we had some passata stored in the freezer from the summer. Yeah, so lots and lots of purple and green. Yeah, that one was kind of a strange lurid green colour um, that turned more of a brown when we cooked it. Again, it tasted awesome, but looks really weird. So it's something to think about. Um, when you're, you're doing sauces and stuff, think about what the colour's going to be at the end. So if you're wanting those tomatoes for things like that, yeah, think about it. But the flip side though, those things look amazing in tomato salads. And we do that as well. Same idea as looks, the size of the tomatoes. Because imagine, say for instance, you want to use your tomatoes for just good old simple, slicing them up and putting them in a sandwich. You kind of don't want to be doing that with cherry tomatoes, it's a bit of a pain. So you might want something a bit bigger. What we would say is salad tomatoes here or slicing tomatoes. Or even those big beef steaks, they're amazing on sandwiches and on burgers and things. So yeah, the shape and size has got a lot to do with it. So that's kind of looks, shape and colour and stuff. I've already touched on this, but a bit more detail for you is what you're going to use them for because... I said that we use leftover tomatoes and make sauces out of them, but you might specifically be growing your tomatoes for sauces. In which case, you might want to think about the ratio of flesh to the seeds in the pulp, because you're going to want a tomato with a lot of flesh on it for making sauces, because you just get more bang for your buck. And a lot of those tomatoes are bred because they specifically taste better in a sauce. Think of things like San Marzano, Roma, that kind of thing. Now, I've never seen it called it here, but I know in the States they get called paste tomatoes, and I think it's specifically because they're good for making tomato pastes and sauces and things. I might be wrong in that. Comment and let me know if that's wrong and what the real reason is. So, we've done the grown-up stuff about your season. We've done what they look like. We've done what you might be using them for. Another essential one that a lot of people might not realise is taste. Now this is one us seasoned tomato growers know, but when you're new and you've never grown tomatoes before, or maybe you've never had a homegrown tomato, this is a bit um, exciting. And I'm saying that again, I know this because this was me when I first started. If you've only ever eaten those supermarket tomatoes, you know, they're just tomatoes, they're nothing to write home about. You put a pile of salt on them, yeah. However, homegrown tomatoes, whole different story. You would not believe the flavour of homegrown tomatoes. In fact, did you know not all tomatoes taste the same? No. You kind of, to simplify it, you get sweet tomatoes and you get more acidic tasting tomatoes. And not everyone likes both. For instance, I'm a massive fan of the acidic tomatoes. Kate, however, likes sweet tomatoes. So again, you can think of things like sun gold that are super amazingly sweet if you want that type of thing. So another thing to have a look at in your seed packets, your catalogues. So knowing your growing season and what the tomatoes need, thinking about what they look like and what you're going to use them for and what kind of flavours you might be after are all really useful things for picking the variety of tomatoes you're going to grow. So what am I growing this year? Well, <laughs> this is your chance to join in, guys. Uh, join us tomorrow night, 4pm UK time on Gardener Scott's channel. We're going to let you guys choose the tomato varieties that we're growing. So I need you to go and get your homework done now and then join us tomorrow. Um, this should be fun. And of course, if you want some more tomato goodies, this is my video on how to grow tomatoes and it's all of my secret tips. And I'll see you tomorrow. And if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you next time. See you guys.